If you find a pressure ulcer that they have not notified you about, that is a big, big red flag. Do you know how to tell if your loved one in a nursing home has suffered from bed sores and what can you do? Well, that's what we're going to ask the lawyer today. Hi again, everybody. I'm Rob Rosenthal with AskTheLawyers.com. And on this episode of Ask the Lawyer, we've got as my guest attorney, Tad Thomas, with the Thomas Law Offices in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, Tad, thank you for making some time to answer our questions today. Thanks for having me again, Rob. Let's just start with uh, maybe a little bit of a definition. What is a bed sore? I think people probably think they know, but uh, tell us at least uh, legally what a bed sore is. Sure. For, uh, for our purposes, a bed sore is damage to the skin and the tissue below the skin. Uh, that comes in really four different stages, one through four. One being just a slight wound all the way to stage four, which is very painful and goes all the way down to the bone in many instances, but it's essentially damage to the skin and the underlying tissue. And, and how are they caused? Why, why do they come about? Well, they're often also called pressure ulcers. Uh, and they come about because someone is laying in one spot for too long. You know, oftentimes we put our loved ones in the care of someone else because they need 24 hour long-term care. And most families don't have the ability to provide that. And that comes a lot of times when you have someone that needs to be turned and repositioned. So you have someone who's bedridden. And when they lay in one place too long, that's when the skin becomes damaged and it creates these pressure ulcers. It also comes from malnutrition as well. Is it always a sign of some neglect and abuse or is it, oh, well, sometimes those things happen? Interestingly enough, um, it depends on what stage the pressure ulcer is. A stage one or two can sometimes happen. It could be a clue that there's some negligent care going on. But even according to the federal government, a stage three or four is what they call a never event. Hmm. They should never happen. So your loved one should never have a stage three or four. If it gets that bad, it probably is a result of negligence. Are these stage three or four uh, bed sores, uh, are, they, are they extremely rare, uh, Tad? Does this happen more often than we think? I wish I could say they are rare, but they're, they're happening quite often in long-term care facilities. And it comes from the facilities not properly staffing for the CNA levels, because it's the CNA, not the nurses, who are usually doing the turning and repositioning. Mm. And what I've found in my case is, is a lot of times the CNAs have too many residents that they have to care for at any one time. The standard usually is that someone should be turned and repositioned every two hours. The CNAs in a lot of these facilities simply can't get to all the residents to do what we call activities of daily living, like turning and repositioning. Is it, uh, I assume there are, there are uh, mandated levels of how many, how much staff they should have. Do you think the levels are too low or they're just not staffing up to full uh, to, to what the standards are? It's a very good question, Rob. And unfortunately, many states do not have minimum staffing levels. One of the states we practice in, Kentucky, does not have minimum staffing levels. Other states do have minimum levels but advocates for long-term care uh, elderly know that these staffing levels are way too low. And so let's, uh, if I find, well, first of all, let's see, would I expect the, uh, the nursing home, the care to let me know your loved one has developed a bed sore, or is it something I need to check for or, or ask about? I would say both. Uh, per law, they're required to notify the loved one, whoever the, the point of care contact is for that senior citizen. They're required to let them know when you have a change in condition and contracting a bed sore is a change in condition. So they should be letting you know. Uh, if they're letting you know, then you should be clued in to you know, follow up on their care and make sure everything's being done to get rid of the bed sore to treat it properly. If you find out on your own uh, through your loved one in the facility or just uh, when you're there, you know, changing your loved one yourself, if you find a pressure ulcer that they have not notified you about, that is a big, big red flag. And a red flag of what? Uh, that there may be uh, more abuse and neglect? And, and then what do I do, Ted? 
Sure. It's a, it's a red flag that your loved one is not getting the care that they deserve. They're not getting turned and repositioned appropriately. Uh, they may not be getting the nutrition that they need. So you need to be looking at things like weights and they should be ha you know, providing an intake log of everything that your loved one is getting. And if they haven't told you about a pressure ulcer, you need to ask if they've been seen by, you know, the nurse who's specifically charged with caring for pressure ulcers. And if you find it, the first thing you ought to do, if they haven't told you about it and you found it yourself, is letting the facility know and right. demanding that your loved one get proper treatment. Uh, if it's really bad, then you may want to contact a law firm. And, and how can a law firm help me? So a law firm can help in a number of ways. Uh, they can tell you what your legal rights are for your loved one. It may be that you need to get into a new facility. Uh, it may be just counseling you on what care your loved one deserves and who to contact. Uh, and if it comes to that point, uh, they can file a lawsuit on your loved one's behalf. If your loved one has a pressure ulcer that's a stage three or four, or has become infected or has required surgery, uh, that's, uh, that's a possible case. It depends on your state and your facility, but an attorney can help answer those questions for you. Tad, what if I think I can't afford uh, uh, an attorney who specializes in nursing home abuse and neglect to help me out in this situation? Well, you can help yourself by finding a law firm that it handles nursing home neglect and abuse cases frequently. Mm -hmm. Any law firm who handles those a lot is going to handle them on what's called a contingent fee basis, meaning they will not charge you either attorney's fees or even case expenses unless they're successful in litigating that case. So the way it works in our office, we're contacted by families. Uh, we do our research. We get the medical records. If we think there's a case and we pursue that case, we would advance all of the case expenses and would not require an attorney's fee unless we're successful at the end of the case. Lots of great information. I'm, I'm sure it's helped a lot of people today as usual, Tad. Thank you so much for answering our questions. Thank you, Rob. That's gonna do it for this episode of Ask the Lawyer. My guest has been attorney Tad Thomas of Kentucky. If you want the best information or you're ready to choose a lawyer that lawyers choose, make sure to go to askthelawyers.com. Also, please take a sec to like, share, and subscribe by clicking on the buttons below so you'll find out about future episodes.